Okay, back out here at the shop again after my work week is over, so technically my weekend. Um, we're going to try and finish up the trailer today. Not too much left to do. Uh, fenders, wheels, and electrical. Uh, I'm probably not going to get any decking on it today because that would take running to Home Depot to get some plywood and all that and I need to actually tear into the brakes on my truck making horrible noises on the back end last night at work on the drive to work so got it out here today we'll tear the if we can get this wrapped up quick enough we'll take the rear wheels off and see what what else is going on I know the rear backing plates are warped and, and there's some other stuff going on there but Seems to be making a lot more noise than they were grabbing and well, sounded like dragging. Uh, so, hopefully, I can get this trailer wrapped up and uh, get some time to do that. Uh, some good news uh, Esau Global, the parent company of uh, Victor Technologies and Tweeko, maker of my welder, did come through on their into the deal so I'm happy with that we'll uh, get to test the TIG function on my welder here in a, one of these days hopefully soon and get a review out on that uh, let's see well that's it for now I'm gonna get started on this and I will I'm gonna try a slightly different yeah last time I was out here I recorded everything I did the whole time the camera was on both cameras were on, the one in my phone and this uh, Contour Roam on the tripod over here. Um, I'm not going to do that today. That ran through battery. It took so much time. I'm still editing that because um, there's so much to wade through. You know, Between the two of them, there's over four hours of footage, and most of it's garbage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to work. And when I come up to something that uh, seems interesting or noteworthy, I will uh, turn the camera back on and talk to you about it and show you what's going on. So, all right, uh, here we go. Okay, so I'm uh, at the point where we mount the wheels. And they actually come, according to the instructions, they don't, but they actually come with the bearings packed, the seal installed on this side, and the uh, cap on this side. The uh, cotter pin is inside the cap. The nut was on the axle, which I took off. So you got to take the cap back off. But they're on there pretty well. They actually seated them pretty well. And, you know, I was trying to pry them off using the lip here. Um, but they were really trying to come off hard and I figured I would end up damaging the desk cap if I kept up that way. I didn't want to damage them before I even got to mount the wheels. So, what I did, set them on the old workmate here, drop my brass drift in there, gotta get the grease off my fingers here. Okay. And actually, let me switch to the other camera here because I can't hold this. Alright, so what I did, I have my pry bars out here because I was trying it that way on the other one at first. Um, that was going to damage things I felt. So put that drift in there. Be gentle. Pop it out. Behind, bearing comes out. Drift gets a little covered in grease, but I can clean that up. Okay. Another quick note: the instructions are off a little bit, depending on uh, which part. This obviously the trailer has been updated many times in design, and the components used have been updated many times in the, in its production life and the instructions never have been. 
It's lots of little things, um, nothing too major. Um, you know, like the wheel bearings, they clearly state that you have to put the seal, dust seals in. You got to put the the uh, wheel bearing. You got to pack the wheel bearings. You got to assemble that whole assembly. It comes pre-packed and assembled. Um, the loop lights up here have changed. They say you got to remove the lens before you and then mount them and put the lens back on. But these have external mounting screws now. You know, lots of little things like that. Nothing too major up to this point. But they also haven't always uh, evidently made sure that things fit properly. So this is the. I'm probably gonna leave this off because it's Oregon and you don't need it. But you know what? They want this on the left-hand side because that's the one they provided with the license plate light. Um, and you're supposed to mount this to the back, run the wires through here, and then tighten it up. The problem is these cheap plastic lights are sealed with uh, hot glue and the wires are bent this way so I can't run them out through this channel I can't get them through here without pinching them off so I'm going to have to probably cut the hot glue a little bit so I can get them to angle this way, run them out this channel and then, uh, then I can mount it either that or I could just leave this off because these will clear the other bracket just runs right underneath them but just in case we ever move to another state, you know, it does have a title and all that if we need it to get it licensed in another state. And it's got the license plate light on there, so I might just have to clean this up a little bit. Reroute that and uh, go that way. Okay, so I'm wiring this thing up. And I've got it folded because that's where you have to allow extra length in the wiring harnesses for the folding process. The wire harness will have to be at its longest while it's folded. Um, I wrapped the required length of the, the harness for the plug here around here so I couldn't accidentally pull, pull it through. One thing to really note is this is the, the wiring they give you is really kind of crappy. Um, they say you're supposed to ground this ground screw to that hole. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little hole right there. They don't provide the screw. They don't provide an eyelet. So, even though they say they provide a screw, they don't. And there is no eyelet on there, so I don't know if they just expect you to strip it and wrap it around the screw or what. They do provide you these nice little clips for holding the wire harness in place. I just kind of strung it along inside the channel here. Up here is where you have to tie it into the running light. So I had to make sure I had enough length when folded to go clear up there. I wanted that clip there to take the strain off so it doesn't pull the wire out of when I fold it if something binds up a little bit. I ran it through the hole in the center with the beams there so as it straightens out I've tested it and it doesn't seem to uh, pinch have any tendency to pinch the wire in there so that's good and then we run it back up and around underneath to the light and this appears to be the extra length that I can cut off <coughs> and it's the same on the other side Except that for some reason, got that one running over the top, but it'll go under the bottom when it's done. Um, the other thing is, it's all, they have it all wanting it to be done with these park, you know, the side marker lights are done with these splice pieces, and then the packs are done with wire nuts, evidently, which I hate wire nuts on anything automotive. So I believe I have a kit around here with ring terminals and butt connectors and I use regular crimp connectors for now. Um, later I may, if I have any issues with it, I may go through and make solder connections and heat shrink them. But since it's going to spend most of its life 
indoors in this shop. I'm not too worried about it. So as you can see it folds up. It's nice and small. So I can just push it up against the the side, either side over here. Still have room to park the motorcycles. And it's on casters. So I can just roll it on out of the shop like I do with the motorcycles when I need to work in here if I need the space. And then it folds down to a full uh, four by eight. It will, the whole deck is one four by eight sheet of plywood cut in half so it'll fold. Supposedly half ton hauling capacity or somewhere thereabouts, I believe. I believe it says on the neck here. Open the top. Down here. Yeah, so it's a half ton trailer. Not too bad. I'm not going to put the deck on it today, but eventually I have to make a deck. And the uh, it comes with the stake pockets on there for 2x4s so I can build sides. Still not sure if I want to do that with 2x4s or if I'd rather make metal sides so I get to play with the welder. But we'll see. And I'll probably end up with wood just because it looks better. So here's the trailer unfolded with the wiring. Stays neatly tucked in there. Makes a little zigzag right there. I have to connect to the side marker. Come along here. It doesn't pinch the wires in the, the joint here. When it's run through that center, it just kind of folds up on either side a little bit. And then that's the excess. And then back to there. So I can cut off the extra and wire it in now, I think. This is the, the caster assembly. Just kind of sits right behind the wheel there. Hopefully close enough that it won't have any tendency to hang up on anything. I don't see how it could unless we're taking it four by and trying to go over logs or something. You know, I have no idea for sure. I wasn't too impressed with the axle. I don't know if the wheels are going to track straight not if they're going to be measured to see if they're towed out or towed in or anything ridiculous but so they may wear funny if they are but right now there's not a whole lot I can do about it at the moment but other than that not too bad I mean it's about like putting together some piece of furniture from Walmart the instructions are a little off it takes a little tweaking here and there but in the end, it seems to go together okay. I've got extra nuts and bolts down there, so I'll save those. But it appears they just send extra because there's nothing to do with them in the instructions. Now, once the thing's unfolded, what keeps it from uh, folding back up is you take these. Uh, carriage bolts and you stick one in on each side right through here and then one through here and that locks this whole assembly together. And then you take them out again, fold it up, you also have to either tilt or when you're folding you have this assembly here, which is what you saw me beating on in the last video, because none of this was straight and lined up. When I tried to make the, the tongue square to the rest of the trailer, it wouldn't fold anymore. So I had to beat those into place to match, because I don't want it tracking and flaming. I wanted it to be nice and straight. But anyway, you just slide this. It takes a little bit to get it lined up, but you slide this pin through there and 
that holds that from folding, or you can undo it and it'll tilt if you need to load something on it without a ramp. But I do have ramps, so and that ramp can be split in half to be uh, two short ramps, which is what I will use with this. Or put together for one long ramp, which works good for loading a motorcycle in my truck. But, all right, I'm gonna see if I can't wrap up this wiring. Okay, so found a screw and a star washer to put through there. I actually tried that screw down there first, but it's cheap and snapped right off as soon as the thread started biting. Um, so grabbed another screw. Crimped on a ring terminal on there. Uh, I ended up using the splice connectors they provided for the marker lights. What the hell? Um, back here, like I said, I hate wire nuts. Decided not to go with butt connectors because I wanted to be able to disconnect them if I need to take them off or replace them with something else or whatever at some point. So I just, you know, I found I had a box of electrical connectors up here and had some bullet connectors in there so I went ahead and used those so I can quickly disconnect them at any point I want to and and that there it is I think I'm done with it for now I'll fold it up slide it against the wall alright fold this thing up Tears apart from my wiring harness here. Bend over the front. So far, so good. Still in their clips, nothing pulled. back to normal. Hinges back 
little more. I had them loosened up a little bit because I was having problems with it. Well, I was trying to do the wiring. Okay, hopefully there's enough light to show this. Um, so here's my rear brakes. I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, there's a lot wrong here. If you look at that top edge of this pad, it's bent. Okay, the whole thing is slightly twisted forward. And the noise I was hearing today is the spring, which belongs on the bottom, holding the two uh, pads sprung together there. Evidently fell off and it's spinning around there. You can get a, I think there's a little more light on this other side. It's got kind of the same thing going on. I'll try to stay out of the light. But the pad isn't bent on that one. That down there is where that spring goes. But if you can get a view from the top, the actual backing plate is warped. It's got a wave shape to it. Um, so that's got to be replaced on both sides. This one. Uh, has been dragging. There's a bunch of excess dust build up in there and the it's flaking off rust because it's been getting hot and then getting wet and you can see all the dust build up in the side of the that wheel. And to a lesser extent, you can't see it with the light, but on that wheel and this one hasn't been dragging as bad. It's not been getting as hot. So it doesn't have as much rust flaking off the outside, but it is twisted more. It's actually more noticeably twisted, and it's got that bent shoe. The bent shoe may actually be helping to keep it from dragging so much. I gotta see if I can get that spring back in there for now so I can at least drive it home and park it, because I can't keep it here overnight. All right, well, Spring's back on. I don't know how well it'll come out on camera, but that's something you don't see too often in Oregon. Nice blue sky, and then everywhere, one storm cloud dropping rain all over. It looks like Corvallis. 